Hi, I'm Brian Tima, one of the pastors here at Grace Spring Bible Church. Our prayer is that God use this as an incredible resource to align your heart with His. We know that you're not always able to plug into a local church, but we highly encourage that. Yet we are grateful to be able to offer this resource to you. And if you find that you've been ministered greatly by something that the Ministry of Grace Spring has been doing, feel free to check out our website in ways that you might be able to serve or give. Now let's prepare to hear well, the Well, good of morning, God. church family. How are we doing today? Yeah. That didn't sound too enthusiastic. We're in June already. Can you imagine? Time is going fast. I can only imagine. Well, I, it, it's just time is going fast. Anyway, it's so good for you to be here today with the family of faith. Uh, Whether you're here in person, you're joining us online, um, we are here, we are gathered because something significant happened 2,000 years ago, and that is Jesus Christ came God in the flesh, and He gave birth to this movement that we call the church, capital C Church, and we are just one of many churches around the world, and we celebrate with them today. We celebrate a risen Savior, and today's going to be a little bit different. For those of you who are visiting with us, what's a little bit different about today is once a year, we just have a, a uh, service that's just dedicated to celebrating what God is doing, has done in the last year looking forward to what God wants to do. Um, Kind of a weird time at the beginning of summer to kind of be doing a Sunday like this, but um, we just have a lot of different things to cover, but we want to make sure this is a time always that you meet with God, even when we have uh, some church things to, to cover today. So I hope you're excited about that because we're rejoicing in what God is doing. We are uh, being attentive to hearing how God is leading Um, because as I reminded us last week that God has put spiritual leaders to, to really be under shepherds as we follow after our head shepherd who is who? Jesus Christ. And so with that, it's been so important for us to be attentive. So you'll be hearing all of that. And then you'll be hearing of just, uh, just some next steps of just following points of emphasis that we're going to be focusing on, the budget to support that, and then uh, more elders to be added to grow in care for this church family. So I hope you have come today in anticipation that God is going to meet you right where you are. And uh, I want to pray for us before, just to set our hearts for this Sunday. Lord God, thank you so much for those who are here to give ear to what you are doing to celebrate. Lord, also to anticipate. And so Father, uh, just with everything from the songs that we sing, to the Word of God that will be uh, proclaimed to the hearts of our brothers and sisters, not only here, but literally around the world, because you came to give birth to the most powerful, most incredible movement known to mankind, the Church of Jesus Christ. Thank you that you made us a part of that through your blood. Thank you for that, Jesus, in your name. Amen. 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 Can we please stand? Cry all the 
Can I see a quick show of hands of who has experienced the faithfulness of the Lord? Cool. A lot of us, most of us. Um, I just want to encourage you to take a moment to re reflect on how he has been faithful to you. And um, the most recent thing you can think of, of a worry that was nagging at you and you were wondering, you know, how and when and, and when, am I, when am I gonna see this and when, I'm, when am I gonna be on the other side of this and, and how and, and now you are. And I know we have a lot of stories like that and, and we forget often. Um, but the Lord, he, he doesn't change. He was faithful from his not, beginning that doesn't exist to an end that doesn't exist. He is never changing. He is the most faithful. He will come through time and time again. And, and yet we still worry because it's what we do at times. Um, but it's a lack of trust in who the Lord is and what he says he's going to do. And um, I'm fully preaching to myself this morning. Um, I was in tears this morning just wondering, you know, like, I mean, I have a six-month-old baby wondering, like, am I going to feel well-rested <laughs> ever again? And it's hard, but, um, like, I know the Lord has us. He's in control of my child. She's his before she's mine. He's in control of us and our sleep and the energy we need to face the day. And um, so I just want to call us all to thank the Lord in this moment for his faithfulness to us and to bring that gratitude, those memories to mind of when he has pulled us out of a pit that we didn't know we could be pulled out of, um, rescued from times we didn't know we could be rescued from. And let's praise him for that this morning. Your word remains the same. 
can you stay standing? I want to uh, read a text of Scripture, and I just want you maybe even to close your eyes to visualize this, but this is straight from God's Word, found in Ezekiel 47. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east, and behold, water was trickling out on the south side. Going on eastward with a measuring line in his hand, the man measured a thousand cubits and then led me through the water and it was ankle deep. Again, he measured a thousand and led me through the water and it was knee deep. Again, he measured a thousand and he led me through the water and it was waist deep. Again, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass through for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in a river that could not be passed through. And he said this to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. As I was back, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba and enters the sea. When the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be very many fish for there, this water goes there. That the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea. From Engedi to an en Enegulum, it will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. And on the banks of both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. You know, when you come in every Sunday, you see this imagery. Um, the imagery is here of Ezekiel 47. And if you recall... Um, this last fall, we did a series entitled Ecclesia. And in this series, Ecclesia, we were identifying what makes the secret sauce of Gray Spring Bible Church. And that is what I believe that makes this such a special place is that people get that um, the church is the people, not a place you go. Would you agree with that? I, I get this from people. It's like, it's like people really want to be here. It's like, praise God. I think a very unique thing that we see when you just look around is the variety of age groups here, and we are worshiping together as one. Isn't that great? I mean, I, I tell you, I, I've had visitors come here and they go, how do you get this? Because we go to churches that tend to be either really young or really old, but man, what, what is that? And I go, I think our people are really embracing that the church is the people, and it is God's composition of a variety of different kinds of people that bring us all together as one. And that's a beautiful thing today. Would you agree? I, I love that. There's so much to celebrate. You know, during the Ecclesia series, we were really putting out the challenge because for so many, church is a place you go. For so many, Christianity is a list of rules to follow. And I go, man, there's nothing exciting about that. I, I'm just being honest with you. Nothing excited about just following rules, thinking that you're scoring points with God or whatever. It's like, no, man, he is inviting us into a relationship. Jesus said, follow me. He says, follow me. So we're going to be talking about that. But, you know, there's just so much. There's just so much to celebrate this year. You know, we were encouraging every, every attender to be a member. 
You know, now some, it's just like, no, good luck. You're never going to get that with me. It's just like, okay, I'm just trying to be biblical, trying to be biblical, because the number one illustration for the church of Jesus Christ is that of we are a one body, many parts, many differing members, okay? Some are the knee, some are the shoulder, some are the armpits, But all are really hugely important to the makeup of the beautiful thing we call the church, the ecclesia, the movement of God. And everything in that imagery is what we pray for because that imagery given Ezekiel will literally be seen in Revelation, will literally be seen, but we get a precursor of what that looks like when Jesus would give birth to the church the body of Christ here on this incredible planet, but this incredibly broken planet. You know, 41 years ago, you know, there were those who said, let's start a church that is again grounded in the word of God. And we will not waver on that. (laughs) And I appreciate, I got probably more encouragement emails this week uh, just from last week's sermon, The Judgment of God. It's like, well, here we go. But, but here's the deal, because it was the emphasis of pastor, thank you for reminding us that we're a church that's not only about truth, but also about grace. And that's the beautiful dance with the Holy Spirit of God, who is the third person of the Trinity, by the way. The Holy Bible is not the third person of the Trinity. Holy Bible is important. The scriptures are authoritative and they're inerrant from cover to cover. So we will unashamedly be about that, but we have got to continue to just celebrate that we have a a people here that are getting it. And I think the healthy peer pressure of Grace Spring Bible Church is that you are going to be part of the church. You are physically going to give your time, your talent, your treasure. Every attender a member, every member a disciple. What is a disciple? A disciple is one who is committed to full following Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Okay, it's not following a pastor. It's not following a church. It's following Jesus. God has just used this church family as an instrument to be a gymnasium to work out spiritual muscles that you're inclined not to work out if left to your own, let's build our own church, let's do our own house church, let's get this and have people who believe just like me. The beauty of this is that we all have a variety of different Uh, perspectives, a variety of different convictions, a variety of different passions, and the beauty and the genius of how the Holy Spirit works is that he's able to bring all that together. And we celebrate that. And we celebrate that in that, look how many new members we just got just during the, since the fall. This is just... And there's more in the pipeline, but these, and that doesn't include kids. I mean, it's just like God is doing a work here, and and we celebrate that. And so in the course of this year, we just put a little video together just to celebrate just some pictures of what God has done in the course of this last year.
Well, that's just a snapshot. I tell you, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see a growing church family, um, not just numerically, but spiritually hungry. And we praise God for that. Um, a growing staff team, to have a staff, a growing staff that is so committed to our mission. Um, you know, I, w- I was led as I was praying over this morning uh, to a passage in Isaiah uh, 43, verse 16, that says this, Thus saith the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariots and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I, I tell you, I'm perceiving that here at Grace Spring Bible Church. Are you? I mean, I, I am perceiving that. I, I remember interviewing about 10 years ago, 10 years ago already, interviewing for this post. And I said, I know that there were glory days of Grace Spring, but I'm just here to tell you, if you want a leader that wants to lead you back to the past, I'm not your guy. But if you want a leader that just follows wholeheartedly and just seeks what the Holy Spirit is doing, then I'm your guy. And, uh, and really because I really wholeheartedly believe that when you are a movement, um, there is movement. <laughs> that there's not stagnation. You know, there is a, I, I think people are far more willing to get excited about being a part of a flowing river, not a stagnant pool. And I believe that God is a God who is ever saying those words to us. He says, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And I've talked to people. We, I've met with elders the other week. And it's just like, man, we're perceiving it. It's like, praise God, we're perceiving it. He says, I will make a, a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Does that sound like Ezekiel 47? Sounds like Ezekiel 47. Rivers coming from the temple as worship is happening. A current is going out to dry places. Remember last week's sermon? Do you guys remember last week's sermon? Yeah, thank you, please. Please, I like, know, no, no. Uh, we're supposed to remember those, yeah. Last week was Sodom and Gomorrah, and God's judgment comes on the evil of those cities, and fire and brimstone, sulfur come down and, and make really the rift of valley. And the beauty of the Ezekiel 47 vision and this is that same valley where judgment once flowed is now springs go there and everything that's dead now turns to life. They'll be fishing in the Dead Sea again. You go, it sounds impossible. I know, but it's going to happen because God's word says it. He says this, the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people and the people whom I form for myself that they might declare whose praise? My praise. Not me, my, no, him, the author, uh, Jesus, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that he gets the praise. And I'll tell you, one thing that I just think is so challenging in today's society, and I contend, it, I, I contend against this like crazy. I think those who know me understand how I contend with this. But we live in a day of celebrity pastors, celebrity churches, everything's celebrity. And I, I so am not that. Um, it's just like we have got to be about Jesus. Jesus is the one that we are about. This is why our mission statement is, for those of you who are new with us, it is this, helping people take a step closer to Jesus. That is what we are about. But it's helping people. It's assisting people. It's using our influence to be used as a conduit of the Holy Spirit of the living God to get eyes, people's eyes off of self and circumstances and onto the living hope that we have who's Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is given as our helper to make much of Jesus. Not make much of a church, not make much of those with gifts that uh, is easy to have a good or the heads. No, it is about, the Holy Spirit's about making much of Jesus. And I said when I interviewed 10 years ago, 
I said this. People said, well, do you get concerned what the church has been through all that kind of stuff? I go, here's the truth. You plant Jesus and the church will grow. No doubt. No doubt. I had people say, man, Brian, you are just such an eternal optimist. No, it's because I've seen God come through so many different times. And faith, for me, that's kind of really high in my spiritual gifting. But, but it's only because of daring to take steps of obedience. And it's almost like the Indiana Jones. Yeah, take a step of faith. But it doesn't look like, okay, whoa, there is something there. Man, that is an invitation when God says, man, follow me. This whole work, this ecclesia began with those words, follow me. It's a choice. It is a choice. And it's taking a step closer to Jesus. And what I love about this journey is I will not stop learning about him until the day I die on this side of glory. So there is continually things that the Holy Spirit of God is, hey, here you go. Have you seen this in me before? I don't really want to go there. Well, yeah, but this is who I am. So come on, Brian, let's enjoy the journey. Mine for the gold that is found in the depths. And that's what I love about Ezekiel 47. It's the depth of the further this goes out on mission, the deeper it gets. And I find people who do not get excited about mission, it's because there's not a whole lot going on in the heart. Um. Because when you give your life to Jesus Christ, it is an invitation of following into an epic adventure that will never be boring. (laughs) It'll never be boring. You'll go through weird seasons, but that's just part of the journey, okay? So our strategy is this. Our strategy has always been, hey, we want people to belong in real relationships. We say real relationships because at church, there can be a pressure that everything's got to be good all the time when everything is not. You know, I appreciate Raina just sharing what she shared because, man, as a, as a new mom, um, babies get up in the middle of the night even keeping you up all night before you are leading praise and worship on a Sunday morning. But that is to say, okay, here I'm struggling. Man, let's pray and let's go before our king together. Um, So we want you to belong in real relationship. That's why this is a church of small groups. I'm so glad that we brought Eric Kuhn on board just to really help reinforce that here in the past year to say, come on, we need to give far more attention for people to belong in real relationship. Why? So that they can grow to be like Jesus. That is why the church is the church for us to grow to be like Jesus, to grow and mature, and to reach people where we live, work, and play with the good news of Jesus Christ in a variety of contexts. So it is no mistake the neighborhood God has you. It is no mistake the work, the employment God has you. It's no mistake that God has you where He wants you so that He can use you as His conduit to be a river of blessing so that out from your heart will flow streams of living water. Amen? Aren't you glad for the maturity process? Do you know who this is? Whoa, 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 what's that? Laughter, come on! Yeah, that was me as a sophomore in high school. Yeah, just uh, yeah, help him, Jesus. Yeah, I was a sophomore in high school, but I was at the beach a lot, okay? So anyway, but aren't you glad that I grew up? We don't have to be that adamant about it. I know Tammy and I were high school sweethearts, but not then, okay? Um, She had, yeah, anyway. um, Do you know I'm a grandfather? A second time? Yeah, so we got Sadie Grace, but now little Elijah Paul came in Friday morning, uh, which is great. Mom and and are doing good. And I know you look at me and say, you're too young to be a granddad. I know, of two. I get it, I get it. But here's the thing. We're both in the growing and maturing process. But here is what we have done as a leadership team because we are um, a, a church that is, is organized as, as close as we could be biblically organized as possible. And God has put 
uh, godly men in, in charge of really direction of this church family. And so, you know, what happens every year, early in the year in January, elders get together and we pray and we seek the Lord together and say, here are the things we are sensing that we need directionally to go as a church family. Um, while also not catering to, I know when you are a church in the United States of America, it tends to follow more a... Uh, a business plan, okay, shoot for this, shoot for this, shoot for this, shoot for this, but we are constantly reminded that unless the Lord builds the house, the labor's labor in vain. And so we just said, Lord, what are we sensing? And so we took what we were sensing and then we brought that to the pastors and directors and, and we say, okay, Holy Spirit, how are you aligning hearts? And so it was very, very clear that the following three ways are, are kind of what we must be about more as a church family that you will see far more intention in these areas here in the years to come. One is this, that we be more of a praying church. Sound exciting? Yeah, I'll tell you, th- this is the practice of abiding church. We, Jesus says, John 15, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. Apart from me, we can do nothing. I've got to admit before you, I feel bad that after 10 years, it's taken 10 years for me as your pastor or one of the pastors to get totally like, okay, we, we, we cannot not have this as number one priority anymore. It's got to be that, got to be that. And so you're going to see far more initiatives. We're going to see uh, worship services designed a little bit different with some flexibility, variety, all that kind of stuff for the purpose of we have got to meet with God. You have got to meet with God. I have got to meet with God. This has all got to be every Sunday about meeting with God to propel us into the week because into the week is where the ministry is, but that we must be a, be a praying church because we are inviting God to build what is necessary, the fortress, so to speak, of love, of grace, of truth, and, and having this be a place where we can do that together. So you will see Prayer teams formed, unique prayer teams formed for different aspects. You will see us designing services that really have variety and have this. Um, uh, we just have to be more of a praying church, more nights of prayer, and just seeking the Lord together, starting the year out together, um, engaging in fasting. Um, I wasn't raised much in a background where we did that a lot, but at the same time when I read God's Word, there's the assumption that, hey, just like I was... Jesus assumed we would be tithing. He's assuming we will be fasting. Um, So some of us say, well, I don't come from that background. I know, maybe you didn't. But you've heard me say this before. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. And people are going, yep, that's why you're not getting me to pray. Yes, but that's only, statement's only true if you're teaching dogs and you're teaching tricks. This is the Word of God. We are to submit to all of it. Secondly is this, that we be a celebrating church, that we be a celebrating church. Uh, when I was praying through even a scripture to reinforce what it means to uh, be a celebrating church, what we mean is bearing witness to, testifying of the life-transforming power of God in my life, and to make sure that we don't have lockjaw and we keep that to ourselves. The most amazing testimonies in Scripture in which cities were transformed as a result was even the Samaritan woman who met Jesus at the well, and then she goes into town and she says something about it. I'll tell you, everything in our society is don't proselytize your faith, don't proselytize your faith. In the meantime, you get office parties and everyone's telling how drunk they got or how wild they got in Vegas and all that kind of stuff. They're not apologizing for saying that. So why do we need to be apologetic and just say, here's the hope that lies within me? Amen? Yeah, this is appropriate every so often in times like this to say amen. So uh, that just means I agree. But in Psalm 105, uh, it says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. See, to me that's prayer. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Well, that is celebrating. That is, is, is testifying the goodness of God. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Again, 
prayer reinforced, testimony reinforced. Remember his wondrous works that he has done, his miracles, his judgments he has uttered. It just says we're not to be silent about this church. So we're to be a celebrating church. You're going to hear, you, you've seen things already brought to the stage. There's far more testimonies. We're going to have those on video. So they, there's a testimony library, all of that kind of stuff. We're just, you're going to hear more stories um, because we need to share stories. And if you have a story, please let us know. Um, third is a more compassionate church. Now we are a compassionate church, but what I love about Jesus um, is the statements of, I remember John the Baptist had just died, his, his very close relative, but his, the one who prepared the way for Jesus, he died and he was sad and he was mourning and he left and all of a sudden 5,000 men plus uh, women and children followed him and it says Jesus was tired, but he was moved with what? compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd so he said okay time to die to me and to now extend compassion we as a church do such a good job with that but our heart and prayer is always lord move my heart with what moves yours and that we need to be a a church that dares to do roof wrecking remember that story of these guys who were so desperate to have their friend see Jesus that they wrecked a roof. And you go, yeah, but how offensive is that? I don't know. How many roofs are you willing to wreck for the compassion that's in your heart so that others get to meet Jesus? All right? So, more of that. But, you know, one of the special things that we've been having fly under the radar that's very real. In fact, when we did our last child dedication, a family was saying, you have no idea how awesome Shine Ministry is. We are here at the church because of Shine Ministry. Shine Ministry um, is a ministry that we have here that not only helps address uh, those with special needs, but also those who have behavioral issues that might and challenges that we need to have a little bit more attention and buddy system and those kinds of things. We've got spaces and have created spaces for those who are overstimulated to be able to calm down a little bit. And and I'll tell you, we've got more and more families here who are open to um, fostering, open to adoption, and that is just so good. And sometimes with those transitions, there can be some some unique behavioral challenges, we just want to make sure that we are a church family that says, you've got a place that you can engage with the Lord and let us love on your kids well. But here in the next year, we want to extend that not just to kids, we want to continue to expand that into all the different ministries of Grace Spring Bible Church, but for that to happen, we need the church to be the church. Amen? It's like, oh no, now he's starting to ask something for me. Yeah, this is the church. Um, so what excites us in growing deeper is this shine ministry that I just said. I, we, we just want to see this um, just continue to grow and flourish and get far more hands involved in this. I'm so excited about who God has been bringing here because I think as a pastor, the best gift I can give and we elders can give is hearing with our eyes and Lord, what are you doing? Okay, now, okay, let's be, okay, you're acting on this, so now let's see how we can come along and reinforce what you're doing here. And God has been bringing the most incredible occupational therapists or those who are working in the school systems that are already working with those with special needs. God's been bringing a variety here. It's like, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. But you're going to see uh, this more and more. Discipleship pathway, you've heard this said for a long time. We we're unveiling this here this fall. The, the, this is just a snapshot of it where... Um, Discipleship following Jesus that we as a church have a strategy of head, heart, and hands that have in it not just a linear way of growing up to be like Jesus, but a very realistic of how this journey works. And it's kind of like those books where you read and it says, if the chapter ends and it says, if you want this, if this person made this decision, jump to chapter three. Uh, You know those books? Yeah, find your own adventure, that kind of thing. I think our discipleship pathway is that, less linear and more, let's meet you where you are. 
um, and grow you up. So excited about that. Missions engagement. We're going to have a lot more um, opportunities for us to go on mission. But remember, the third point we had said, every attender a member, every member a disciple, every disciple on mission. Every disciple on mission. You can't do discipleship effectively without mission. And there can be a tendency in Bible churches to say it's all about knowing no, James says faith without works is dead. So you can know and out theological people all over the place, but uh, you've got to be on mission. And so we just want to help with that. And then our response care center is just doing such an incredible job, you know, being at the forefront of the mental health crisis we are in. So we as a church know that um, our response care ministry has kind of reached a limit in its impact due to how we've been structuring it. And so we just continue to seek the Lord together. But speaking of response care, um, Rob Cook, uh, Rob Cook is our care pastor. And uh, this summer he's going on sabbatical. So praise God for that. He's been here like 18 years. Uh, so it's like, okay, good. So he will be gone mid-June through July, but yeah, just totally excited about that. Um, but um, yeah, just thank, thank him for what God is doing in and through that ministry. Um, but it's exciting. There are certain things we have to keep under wraps as to what that ministry does, but it's pretty cool just to be able to get uh, uh, the Word of God in the hearts of people and in their mental health uh, situation. So um, attention needed. Um, here is something that, again, I'm just being transparent with you. Um, you know, the sermon is really, really super important on a Sunday in the life of a church, but it's not the most important. It's important. It's not the most important. Sometimes I've had to come to grips with uh, how much you guys forget what is said on the Sunday morning, and I feel really bad and cry myself to sleep. Um, <laughs> But really, life impact it happens more in smaller contexts than this. This is important, but this isn't the most important. You know that we have an arsenal of great teachers here. And we always just said it's, the importance is that the Word of God is being opened, and we've got a variety of people that are opening it up so that I can spend my time really in helping uh, form a team to develop a leadership pipeline. Um, I just think a leadership pipeline in a church is hugely important and uh, Christ-centered leadership, uh, robust marriage ministry, our response care is doing that. But man, I'll tell you, there's more things we can do because marriages are under fire. Marriages are under fire. And I think we just got to, I want to give my time to how can we shore up and start building uh, marriage mentors to come alongside these uh, who are getting married. And then a vision for our property. Do you know that we're just over 400000 before all of our property is paid off? 400, just over 400000 away. Isn't that great? We praise God. It's like, Lord, what do you want done? And so this gives me the opportunity of seeking the Lord and just saying, Lord, what do you want? What do you want this church body to do and how to develop the 27 acres that are undeveloped that have been there forever? And, and people dreamt and prayed and paid for the property. And now God is slowly revealing, okay, here's what we want you to do. So here's what I want to, before this, as I'm finishing up my time, can I ask us to pray daily for the ministry of Grace Spring Bible Church? You know, we can say it all day, but you know, when we put the watch alarm or the phone alarm on, um, you go, well, why 1010? I don't know. I kind of am crazy sometimes. And John 1010 says this. John 1010 says this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. So there's a choice. In one verse, there's a choice. Either be duped by the lies of the enemy or follow hard after Christ and let him lead you into abundant life. That's why 1010. So if you can get your phones out and put 1010 that every day at 1010, you are going to pray for the ministry of Grace Spring Bible Church. Would that be awesome? Can you do that? Because here's the cool thing. You are shopping in a store and all of a sudden you hear someone's alarm go off at 1010. It's at the same time your alarm is going off at 1010. And you go, hey, do you go to Grace Spring? He goes, yes. <laughs> and you can be at Walmart or Meyer or Aldi and you can say, hey, let's pray. Let's pray for the church right now. Amen.
So the question for you before uh, Jim comes up here is what's your next step? We got baptism coming up. I, I talk to people who say, I'm too scared to be baptized. I bet get in front of people. Please take that step of obedience. We've got a lake baptism coming up August 18th. Become a member. Um, give of your time, talent, treasure. Choose to serve one. Um, sit one. I, I say that because we just always need more help in areas and you might in the fall pray about hey we're going to serve this hour as a family and then we're going to attend as an hour in this family um here in the summer months we'll probably need some first service people to move to second if you can because we can have space issues here second service you'll have a little bit more room but pray about those things but one thing we said a year ago and that is we have been so blessed here at grace spring bible church by all the talent that we've been uh, given and, uh, you know, Rob Kirschbaum led praise and worship for five years. Five years. Man, we, we uh, thank, I mean, that is amazing. And all of our different worship leaders here in the last year have just been uh, continuing to pick up the mantle and run and lead. But we said a year ago we were going to start looking for a worship arts pastor. And now I think uh, God might have answered that prayer. But Jim, more on that. Yeah. Yeah, it was literally a year ago, and so we've been enjoying and blessed by all of our volunteer worship leaders all through this past year while we've been on this long journey. We engaged a uh, search firm uh, to help us and uh, to vet people of interest. There's been nearly 70 people that came across uh, that search firm, and then about a half a dozen or so, maybe eight, that eventually those names came to us, and then we've been vetting them kind of one at a time. And as of this past Tuesday, uh, our elder team had made a decision to issue a call to one of the those people, but we can't yet tell you his name. Isn't that great? Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, but yeah, we wanted to be able to tell you what that a letdown, we Jim. got so there. Far, <laughs> yeah, we got there, but uh, in order to care well for and honor his current church family, we're not able to name him until next Sunday because uh, that's when they'll be naming and announcing that there. Uh, so um, we're going to be able to provide information to you in about a week uh, about his name and a uh, little video intro and all that and get a bio out to you. The next step in that decision process, it's been a long journey of several months, lots and lots of vetting and conversations and meetings and interviews and all that, uh, will be to uh, present him to the membership for affirmation. Uh, so the elders, the way that works for pastoral hires, the elders issue a call and then that call is uh, certified by the membership. Uh, so we'll be issuing that to you guys as members uh, here in about a week. It's going to follow a little bit on the heels of all the other affirmations that I'm going to talk right. about just now. And it's just been, that's what the timing is. We weren't able to get it all on one page uh, just to care, in order again to care well for his, his current congregation. We didn't want to be dishonoring right. to them. But let's thank the Lord. It's awesome. Praise yeah. God for that. Woo! Yeah, very cool. Thanks, Brian. Cool. So I'm going to walk us through uh, some a little bit of businessy stuff uh, here to wrap up our vision time together. Uh, just on behalf of uh, speaking, really on behalf of our elder team and our finance team and our treasurer Shane, uh, newcomer serves as treasurer. Could you stand up, Shane, here in the front row? Does an awesome job. And uh, we have a finance team that uh, regularly reviews every, every month what's going on with our finances. And of course, the elders give high level or oversight to all that as well. Uh, this time of year, we have affirmations each, uh, the beginning of each June. And uh, I'm here to talk about three different affirmations. There's actually that fourth that we just mentioned is the worship pastor affirmation that'll follow on the heels of these three. Uh, what we do every year is incoming elders. Um, and then uh, we also do the budget every year. But first, I'd like to talk about uh, just a quick mention of our incoming elders. There are three gentlemen that are just awesome leaders here at the church that have been vetted and approved as nominees uh, by our elder board. That's Ben uh, Belote, Ryan Smith, and Dan Tyke. Uh, if you're a, a, a member, you'll be receiving uh, these bios via email a little bit, little bit later today. There's also available in paper copies in the back. So those are our uh, nominees for elder that we would invite uh, the membership to consider today. Um, by the way, the, the affirmation process itself is what I was just mentioning uh, a second ago too, is that the 
elders uh, work towards these decision points, and then it's up to the members to validate and certify those decisions that the elders have made. So we, the Constitution provides for those things, and we set these forth, like, here's the prayerful results of the work of the elders, and now putting that to the members to certify uh, those points of calling or points of decision. So three nominees uh, to serve as elder in the coming year. These guys serve three-year terms as they come on board. Uh, constitutional updates. Uh, if you're a, a member, again, you've been hearing about this. We had a Q&A a couple weeks ago. There are about a half a dozen updates to the Constitution that the elders have recommended through the work of a team. Uh, they, ga they gave that team some guidance. That team worked for several months uh, on, on some uh, updates to the wording in, in spaces, as well as a couple of functional things related to the size of the elder team and others. You can read about those. I do want to mention that two weeks ago we had a Q&A with our members. And as a result of that Q&A, we have made tweaks to those recommendations based on the feedback that we received. And so if you're a member and you've read it once before, you're going to want to read it again because we've made updates based on the feedback loop that we got. So uh, those are going to be opened up for affirmation as well. Uh, they're one at a time. You can either approve all of them or line item as they go. Those are updates to the, updates to the Constitution. All right. Sorry, business stuff. Uh, finances. I'm going to walk us through where we are for our current year and then give you a high-level overview of the projected budget. Our fiscal year goes from July 1 to July 1. So we're in our final month. Now it's June already, right? So we're in our final month of our fiscal year. This is the giving. We've been talking about that deficit that, that kind of showed up in December uh, where we fell behind based on our year-end giving. Uh, so uh, good news is month by month that's incrementally been shrinking down. We started at 14% behind for the general fund. We're now as of July, these are, the, I'm sorry, as of April, uh, these are the end of April numbers because we haven't closed the books for May yet, uh, but it's down to 5%. Uh, it was, it was 190,000. It's down to 109,000, which is fantastic. Um, the missions giving is also uh, lagging behind what the budget is, but I always want to remind you uh, that we do all the missions stuff. It, this this is, represents the, the giving that's designated to missions. So the general fund also supports the work of missions. Uh, so missions uh, lagging behind the budget numbers there as well. But interestingly, uh, we've also received over 200,000, 228,000 in designated giving to other things, uh, which takes us uh, overall to a plus 4% on giving against the budget. Here's what some of those other things are, just really cool uh, response care gifts and benevolence gifts and uh, direct to the mortgage principal um, and uh, one large gift for tech and security up upgrades that happened uh, middle of the year. Uh, so that's that 228,000 of extra giving. On ex the expense side, uh, the staff at the same time that we began talking to you about that uh, falling behind on the general fund giving, the staff really tightened the belt, got super creative and paused a lot of things uh, so that we've been controlling our spend by 11% now through the year in order to just uh, steward well that shortfall in the general fund giving, which is fantastic. The capital uh, spending is over, but that's in uh, result of that special gift to tech and security. So we've been deploying those funds and that is an, uh, uh, extra, uh, above and beyond the budget number because of the special gift. And the mortgage, uh, $65,000 of extra giving to the mortgage principal, which is phenomenal. And that means, uh, you just heard Brian say we're just over 400000 By the time we get to June 30th, we're projecting our number to be 392 uh, as we get to the end of the fiscal year, which is really, really cool. So we'll enter into uh, fiscal year 2025 uh, under uh, 400000 which is a, just a cool blessing from the Lord. With me? All right, here's the proposed budget for next year, which would begin on July 1st. Um, we, uh, the finance team set a target for us to stay flat with offering uh, and not, not to look for an increase year over year going into next year's offering. So the total offering there, 2.5 million is flat from this current year to the next year. We also approved a year ago to, uh, to use up to $100,000 of our surplus savings on hand. And this year's budget does not project of using any uh, additional cash either. So it's flat to giving. 
flat to cash. Um, and then uh, we had a, uh, a grant this past year for a response care center, and our elders have given us a target of, of 75000 to see some uh, an incremental increase in what we look for uh, for support for a response care center that's outside the walls of Gray Spring. We support it, obviously, inside the walls, but these are additional funds uh, that we're targeting to seek outside the walls of the church uh, because of the impact that's really community-wide for a response care center. So those are last year's numbers. Numbers and this year's numbers, but it's a flat budget on the uh, on the revenue side, and then that's balanced on the expense side. So here you see the uh, kind of pie chart of what we intend to do with our spending, organized along belong, grow, and reach. Um, so it's 36% uh, for our leadership and operations, and then belong is 14, and grow is 24, and reach is 21, and then a mortgage is 5%. So those are all the various ministries of the church and how that breaks down in, in what we spend. There's a handout uh, that explains this in greater detail. That If you're a member, you'll be receiving that in email today, uh, and there's copies of it available at the ministry table beginning this Sunday as well. But just a word, uh, too, that our staff has, um, uh, both with the current, as I mentioned, with current spending, they've really been very careful and managed that well under budget. Uh, they were also, just like you at home and just like me at home, with inflation going up, all the fixed costs for our budget rise. And so the staff was asked to uh, write their variable costs at 10% below for next year um, in order to, to achieve that balance that I just mentioned. So we have a balanced budget. The staff did a phenomenal job of writing budgets that still accomplished incredible things for ministry, but really tightened the belt on, on variable costs in order to be at balance. So we're, we're super excited about that. And I asked some of our staff, like, okay, you, you, you tighten the belt on writing your budget, but what are some things that you're excited about for next year for ministry? And Brian mentioned a bunch of those things already. Uh, but, you know, prayer and shine and uh, storytelling that Brian's been talking about, hiring that worship pastor uh, that we'll be sharing about next Sunday. But also some things like this, uh, outreach partnership with Resurrection Church in Beirut, Lebanon is something that's um, really blossoming that we're super excited about on the global outreach side of things. Um, we're uh, looking to have a missions conference style VBS next summer for our GS kids where we really expand their sense of, of uh, the world and being world Christians and having a care for the gospel going out all around the world. Brian mentioned the disciple pa discipleship pathway and we're excited about some new and expanded resources and tools that we'll be rolling out this fall for that. Um, youth ministry is going to be uh, developing a ministry plan that, that more uh, specifically targets middle school and high school for the specific ages that the kids are in those phases of life. Um, and we're looking to uh, add back an overseas trip for youth and pro probably an overseas trip for college and career as well which we're super excited about. And uh, more steps to keep take, taking care of our facility. We're really blessed with this building and this property, and uh, we've got to take good care of it and, and keep uh, fixing things and improving things, uh, and obviously so much more. But our staff is excited about the ministry year ahead, uh, despite just being super careful to steward uh, with, the, with the resources that we're blessed with in a balanced budget. So uh, affirmation will come out. What the next step is, if you remember, you'll receive an email uh, middle of the day today that uh, gives you all this data. There's a video that explains the finances more deeply uh, than I just did. Uh, and there's handouts that will be available online in that email. There's handouts available at the ministry table as well. And it, uh, later today opens a two-week period uh, to affirm these things. And if you have questions, you don't have to affirm it right away if you're a member. Uh, now this period opens where there can be dialogue if you have questions that you'd like answered uh, along the way as well. Cool? Thanks for enduring the business. <laughs> but it's important stuff for us as a church family. It's part of who we are as well, uh, just like everything we do uh, in all of our week-on-week -week activities. So we're going to finish our day today uh, with uh, singing songs again to our Savior and uh, celebrating, as Brian called us to, all that he has done and all of his faithfulness and really setting our heart towards the things that are ahead for the days uh, that we are living and serving in. So I invite you to stand. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to raise our voices and to finish with these songs of adoration and prayer today. We do ask you, Father, uh, that you would give us hearts uh, that are are tuned to, you, to the mind of Christ, that you would give us eyes that see where you're working and, and hearts that want to join in, that you would give us voices uh, that sing your praise. 
uh, with united hearts, with one, with one mind in Christ Jesus together. We pray for all these things that have been talked about today, that you will grant your favor and your wisdom to us as your people. And we pray now that you'll receive and inhabit these praises that we sing to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
makes us think of holy, holy, holy. Praise God. We're worshiping and we continue in an act of worship, even though we're done singing. We've listened to the word and that's part of the act of worship. We've sung our praises and uh, expressed our thanks to the Holy One as an act of worship. We give as part of an act of worship. And so we have that opportunity with the boxes in the back um, if you're so led to do that today or to go online and be able to do that. We pray as part of an act of worship. And uh, as Pastor Brian has challenged us, we want to be more of a praying church. And so we always have that opportunity. If there's a burden you'd just like to share with somebody this morning uh, over here by the cross, we'll have uh, an elder and some others that... Uh, would just love the opportunity to boldly approach the throne of grace with you on your behalf. Pastor Brian talked about time, talent, and treasure. And I'd like to challenge us this week to add a fourth T to that, our testimony, as we uh, share in the world uh, co-workers or maybe you're closing out at school or you're going to be meeting a whole new raft of people at the Bible conference this week, whatever it might be, our testimony, uh, always being ready to give an a, account of the living hope that's inside us, like it says in 1 Peter 3.15. And so uh, as I give a benediction, probably one you've never heard before, but it's out of the scriptures. It's, it's a different translation. It's uh, a verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. And Paul says this. One final word, friends. I urge you to keep on pleasing God, not in a dogged religious plod, but in a living spirited dance. And so this week, let's dance in the community because of the one who's called us to him and who lives inside of us. Can we do that together? And yeah, we can get early on the dancing. That's just fine. But uh, go in peace. Amen.